o fico? Yeah, Johnny, please try to mute yourself. Gabriela, please mute yourself. So we are live on YouTube now. So we send the link to the group for us to share to others. We want to welcome everyone to today's section. Give all praise for bringing us together. We are sure today to be a wonderful time to spend the time together in this training. Welcome you very specially. So stay tuned as I share the link for today. Right. So generally, how was your day? Today, a lot of well, Christians are celebrating the Chris, uh, the Easter from their various own perspective and um, understanding. And I'm sure from your own end, it may also be so. So how has been your day? Who wants to share with us? I said they're going. Does anybody want to share with us how is our day is going? Yeah. Daniela, let's, 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 let's hear from you. I said they're going. Okay, so what's the nature of your environment right now? Is it please bubbling? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so let's hear from you. Say, Chief, how is your day going? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Okay, all right, let's uh, bow now as we pray together. Father, we thank you so much for this moment. We give you praise and honor adoration for bringing us together to learn again. We pray that you will help us to learn in the name of your word and by your mercies, your children today will be trained to be ambassadors for you and to make great impacts even now and as they progress in their various endeavors in life we pray the lord that your holy spirit direct our thoughts and our understanding will be clear from one high speak to me and speak to every one of us present currently and those who will join us soon and those who watch after now we pray in jesus name amen okay we yesterday who can uh, unmute and share with me what you actually learned from yesterday's uh, training? Who can share with us what you actually learned? Who wants to share with us what you learned yesterday? Okay, Takubu, share with us. We learned yesterday about mastering the fundamental of effective communications. And we split them into three points. And they were um, verbal communication, nonverbal communication, active listening. 
and this, the third topic was crafting compelling content. I talked about in, introduction. This is where you book your audience and set and body. Look at the content of your speech. Wrap up your speech in a polite way. Example: Stand. I stand before mm -hmm. you to shed light on the urgent need for environmental conversation, and also talked about mastering de delivery techniques. And number one was vocal variety. And number two was body language. And number three was overcoming nervousness and building confidence. Mm. I, if, if not, that we are not physically present, I would have asked everyone to give you a round of applause. That was an intelligent answer. It shows indeed you are falling and you are guilting. And I really appreciate that. And I want to encourage everyone to follow suits. Uh, it's uh, a clear indication that you are falling and you are writing things. The Lord bless you. I really appreciate that. And I want to believe that is what others may have also done. And um, we're going to proceed at this very point now. So in our continuation of today, we are going to be looking at engaging the audience. Now, I left off talking about some of the various ways of doing public speaking, and I mentioned the fact that there is what we call, uh, what we call um, manuscript speech. Uh, we also have what we call extrapolatory speech, but the first one is impromptu speech. Now, uh, these are styles of speech in any ways. There are other ones that we do, which are also what types of I'll we'll talk about that along the line. But today, let's see how you can engage your audience in a very dynamic way. Now, uh, as we engage your audience, you know, as you speak, you are the speaker, you are speaking to people. The people you are speaking to, they are the ones that are known as the audience. So by you understanding their needs and using interactive techniques and handling unexpected situations, you'll be able to you know engage the audience so let's look at first analyzing audience and before you start speaking if you are giving any speaking engagements whether in school in your church in your business organization when you grow up you start become when you are given an a speech a speech to speak or to to carry out what you do is to first of all you know understand who you are to talk to you have to think about the people in your audience example is like look at what are their ages what are their backgrounds what are their interests now when you begin to when you now know this uh, information or this piece of information you're able to put them together that will not help you to craft a compelling speech that will be tailored to resonate with them if you speak to aged people and you are telling them about children you are not benefiting them. But when you're talking to aged people, people that are advanced, and you are able to let them know what concerns them, and they have to take care of their health, how they should relate with their uh, children that are now um, grown. They have various. They have the various families. How you can, how they can, you know, lay legacies that will stand the test of time, even after they are gone. What you are doing, you are speaking to that aged group. But when you are talking to aged people and you are saying things that are not of interest to them, you have lost the audience. So the first thing to do for make sure you speak to them. So if you're also going to speak to a group of students, you might also want to use language and example that relates with the experience. You cannot be speaking to students who are just secondary school and you are speaking to them like university. You cannot be speaking to students who are university. To them as those who are in primary school you know it will not make sense to them for they will lose interest in whatever you are saying so analyzing your audience very important so when it comes to religious angle if you're going to preach in any church if your local church first you need to look at what are those people what are the people that make up your audience do you have more of youth youths do you have more of old people do you have more of children you know how would you be able to craft a message that will be able to address their needs. Without that, you will not be able to speak a message, uh, uh, give a speech 
that will make more sense to them. So that's one of the first things to do on how to engage your audience. Number one, I said audience analysis. Now, number two, on uh, engaging your audience is to use interactive techniques. Now, what about interactive techniques? We are talking about you having to use where your audience can be part of the speech you are giving to them. And you're going to keep in your mind that this is a very key part of you giving a very successful speech or sermon, whatever you are doing. Keeping that part that they are going to participate in your in your in your speech. So if you're going to do a study, a study is more like a speech. It's a good interactive, more of interactive section. But sermons can also be interactive session, such a way that the people will follow you in line of thought. And when you're also speaking, it's very important you try to see if what you are saying, the people are understanding you. They're even at the same. Well, don't forget those three words that Aristotle gave us yesterday. Mm -hmm. We talk about the logos, the patho, the ethos, and the pathos. And what about logos, the reasoning? Are, they, are you are you imparting them mentally? Talk about the pathos. Are you uh, in, in terms of character? Are you influencing them? No, and then in terms of pathos, are you affecting them emotionally? So the head, the heart, and the body must be incorporated into your speech. If not, you're able to reach them in a very unique and dynamic way. So one of the ways to in do interactive uh, as you're approaching is to ask questions. You know, so throw some questions to them. You know, so you see me if I, I, at a point yesterday, I was saying, if you got that point, say amen. That point you say amen, it's an interactive situation in a way. So it's a way of you responding to the fact that uh, you are following, okay? So sometimes you can use questions to get feedback from your audience and to know whether they are following your message or your material. Then on that way, it's using group activities. Maybe at the point you can you can speak and break up your audience into groups to bring some together. In this, when they play this role, what happens is that you cannot get them involved to make your speech even more memorable because they will internalize it as they discuss it in their I mean, group of two, group of three, you know, group of five, depending on how large the audience is. So when you do this, what you are doing, you are making your audience to participate in your in your speech. Then uh, what you, as you do this, you see that you become a more uh, dynamic and interactive uh, speaker who want to make a lasting impact upon everyone. The third part of engaging your audience is handling distractions and unexpected situations. Now, no matter how well you may prepare, like we said here today, you must prepare, practice, and practice, and practice. No matter how you do this, sometimes uh, things may not go just the way you planned. You know, and sometimes there can be some technical glitches, you know, like uh, power going off, you know, microphone, you know, stop working all of a sudden, you know, uh, it could even be that as you are speaking, a child can just start crying in the audience, or somebody can just trip and fall. Something will just something will just go wrong all of a sudden whilst you are speaking. So what happens sometimes? You can easily get distracted if you are not well composed. So what you should just do at this point, you know, is to put yourself together. And so in this situation, it's very important that what people do is to stay calm and be focused. Don't forget, you are the chairman of the occasion. You must handle that situation in a very mature way if possible uh if the matter has to be addressed from your own end if there are no ushers uh it is interesting the case moving up and down or preferred moving up and down as the case may be you have to address the situation you know directly from the pulpit so that there can be a, a quick um response to get back on track as you are speaking and you must always remember that your audience is is there uh, to hear what you have to say. So any minor hiccup that happens must not derail your speech because you are there to make an impact. Don't forget you are always there to make an impact. That is it. Don't ever go to speak and take it with triviality. No, it, it's not trivial. So uh, all those minor hiccups should not derail your, in, in your impact at all. So by not staying flexible and also trying to adapt to that situation, you'll be able to handle the unexpected situations with a very unique way of journalism as a public speaker. Now that's on the handling of uh, audience. So uh, in, in the world of zooming these parts, we are saying that by understanding your audience using interactive techniques and they come under pressure, you can effectively engage 
your audience and deliver a speech that will leave them with a lasting impression. As uh, so, you know, turn their mind from those distractions that were, were there by how you handle it. So the next part now, number six, part six on this public speaking is utilizing visual aids. Part of what you add to your your speech is visual aid. Uh, you see, visual aid actually add make your presentation, you know, very interesting. And uh, this is the part where you focus on the design principles, you know, the aspect you make it of multimedia and the aspect of actually to uh, avoid, you know, some common pitfalls. That's what we'll talk about as your media, graphic design and all of that along the and I made, I didn't make use of more of this, uh, uh, graphics on this because it's training i want to get the real onions of it but if subsequently uh or in the past you will have noticed how i make use of powerpoint in my messages in church that's because i want to make that part of the visual aid very effective so now how do you design slides and visuals for your presentation you know if you have to you know how to use system number one is the fact that when you are creating slides or using other visual aids for precision, it is you know important to keep a few key design principles in mind. The first is the simplicity of the slide. So your slide should be very simple. You should avoid clustering your slide with too much text or graphics. You know, in a sense, you are saying that your your slide should be should be clean, should be easy to be read. You know, and that in a way will reinforce your message without overwhelming your audience and uh, when you are choosing your fonts and font style and the sizes try to make sure they are of high contrast colors to ensure with the beauty even from a distance so at the back of the audience from the back you to look at your slide on the screen and then clean and clear and can read it so that's the person make it very simple your slide should be simple and easily readable. Don't cross it with tiny, tiny words like 12 fonts, 14 fonts. It can be as small as 20 fonts size. And you can pick uh, fonts that are like Times New Roman, Garamond, Area. You know, good using PowerPoint. You know what I'm trying to talk about. You can uh, lay your hand on your laptop to get access, self acquainted with some of these um, principles I'm trying to share with you right now. Now, so that will also uh, let us lead us talking about the layouts of your slide. So when you are laying out your slide, aim for balance and consistency throughout the, the your position to maintain a professional appearance. Your layout should be balanced, so it could be consistent throughout the presentation. Now that's on the aspect of uh, adoption, the aspect of what? On the design principles for on your visuals on PowerPoint, you nine. Know? Number two is integrating multimedia effect. Once you multimedia now, it can be audiovisual, you know, and uh, the audiovisual can also be inside your uh, your your PowerPoint. You know, uh, it's not just about you writing and creating pictures. No, when you are adding or multimedia into your slide, it means that you can add videos, you can add images, you can add audio clips to enhance your presentation. When you are showing videos now. You can just be using words to add insight to what you are showing them or say, this is what I'm saying. This is a confirmation. This is what's happened. Like you, if you remember some Sabbath ago at Spring of Life Chapel, Pastor Chigozi was giving a, a speech or giving a sermon on the Global Youth Day. He showed us uh, various videos from various uh, conferences and unions. So that way of saying we are integrating multimedia into our presentation so you see when he was playing them he just made some inputs here and there so that enhanced his presentation so when you are choosing multimedia make sure actually it's what will add value to your message and it doesn't distract from your main point are we together now so keep your videos very short it's only the one that will be very long and uh, it's you know it's not relevant to what you are saying and when you are picking videos make sure they are of high uh quality or videos or uh, images you should have high quality to support you. What you bring that is blurry to your people, they can lose interest in what they are what you are trying to present to them. And don't forget that before you present to people, make sure you have tested those multimedia beforehand to ensure that it's going to work smoothly during your presentation. And one thing we also do 
if you're going to preach any church, we want to use all these PowerPoints, you have to meet the multimedia crew before the time to give them the slide, either in the flash drive or your, either your laptop to help you extract those multimedia from it. So when you are preaching, you now give them the uh, slide or you are giving them the video. No, it will destroy the theater. It will cause the, a break or a breakdown in the flow of your presentation. So you have to meet them before your message. Um, so when you are, when you're on the point, just, uh, just uh, point to them and they will do the needful from their end and they present for, for you. So that's very important. So don't go and give them whilst you are presenting, but give them before you present, prepare their minds ahead of time. Then number three, um, I've already come up with for in your virtual presentations. There are actually a few common mistakes to watch out for when you are using your visual aid. One is actually relying too heavily on your slides. No, your slide is not to be re so re relied on heavily. You are the star of the show, and your PowerPoint is not the star of the show. So make sure you use your slides to complement your presentation, not as a crutch. Because uh, sometimes when light goes off, if you are relying on your on your slide completely, you can lose your composure. You can lose your balance. People will know that you have not mastered your message. So the slide is just to complement what you are saying. And that way, you will not you need to use too much of text, even on the slides. Sometimes you have to just use um, bullet points or key phrases rather than having full sentences all over there. Uh, if if you notice me, what I'm using with you now, I'm using full sentences in the, in the PowerPoint. They will call, they will call presenter view presenter view on your slideshow. If I was to use presenter view, the reason why I'm using a laptop now to present to you, and uh, I'm not casting it to a television or casting it to a projector. And the screen, what I'm, before I'm sharing with you, if I was to do that now, uh, I will have some, I will not be showing more what is on the screen. The people will call notes. You add the note into your PowerPoint. You add the note into your PowerPoint. You will be saying it, it will not be shown to the people, but they will only be saying maybe right now. I'm showing a very common pitfall in visual presentation. What I'll be showing you just this number three. But all that that I'm saying right now that I put together, I'll put it in my notes. I will only be the one I'll be seeing on my own laptop. You will not see from the screen that I'm showing you. So that's where we're creating PowerPoints. All the things you want to say, you put them under your notes, it's below your laptop. Nobody will see it, but you'll be seeing it alone. So in that way, you will just give them bullet point. That's a way of also doing it. But because it's online, I want to see it because of the recording I'm also doing. I want to be on it in case my voice is not audible. Who can I read it clearly? That's why I had to design my slide this way. It was intentional. But when you are doing it in a professional way, like physical way to the people, try at, as much as to avoid putting the sentences fully on your slide. Just use bullet point or key phrases rather than full sentences. And finally, be mindful of the design choices you make. You know, make uh, like flashy animations or basic backgrounds can be very distracting and can take away your message from the people. So that's on that. So in well, zooming this now, this part by following these principles and avoiding common people, you can effectively utilize visual aids to enhance your presentation and engage your audience. Always remember the goal is to reinforce your message and make it easier for your audience to understand. And remember, visual aid are just one to your arsenal to help you achieve uh, that goal. You know, people, somebody said that uh, a picture is more than a thousand words. Uh, words. So when you give them that picture, like uh, I can say, people say, I'm talking about consider yourself. I can use a, a, a picture that is like pointing to others. I write the three hands are pointing back to you. That alone, that's this, like with my hand, like this way it is now. You can put on your screen. We you put also like that, and you are talking about a message that has to do with a Galatians 6 verse 1. Consider yourself. It means that you don't be careful how you talk about others whilst you have your own pitfall. That alone can send a very powerful message to your audience. And when they put that in their mind, they are, their minds are so powerful, you can photograph that screen. And that is all they may need for the whole message, and it will remain there forever. So learn how to use graphics very well in your presentation is very important it's very important you must have to learn it so if you don't have these days phone i'm using in fact more of the i'll be giving to you on graphic design we am using more of phone than laptop using CorelDRAW, adobe uh, pro and all of that 
If you don't have laptop, what happens? So I'll be really teaching you how you can use your phone, the Android phone, Android phone, another house phone is to be able to create your slide, to be able to uh, do the video, to be able to edit. That's how we focus on when we get to that point uh, along the line. So just uh, keep that at the back of your mind. This is a snapshot on this for now. So let's look at the part four, I mean part seven on this uh, training, which is practicing and receiving feedback. Now, uh, practice and receiving feedback in uh, in your public speaking can help you to hone your speaking skills. Now, the first thing when you want to uh, practice is to do what we call mock presentation with constructive feedback. I made reference to this yesterday uh, a bit. Now, well, one of the best ways to improve your public speaking skill is to tr is through practice. It cannot be well emphasized. It can never be well emphasized. So when you conduct uh, mock presentations, what it does is to allow you to stimulate or to simulate real speaking scenarios, you know, and refine your delivery. What happens is that after each practice session, you need to people you are present uh, to yes, if you're a husband, present your message to your wife. If you're a wife, present your message to your husband. If you are a, 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 a son in the home, you have your father, you have your mother, you have your siblings, tell your parents, I want to present my message, I want to share in church tomorrow with you. Present to them. Then once you present it to whoever you are presenting it to, you know, ask them, how is it? Did I speak well? Was I good? Was I was I clear enough? Did I arrange my speech orderly? You know, was I too fast? Was I timid? You know, you have to ask them key questions. Uh, to ensure that they are they, they were with you and it will give you that feedback you need to be able to deliver you know more effectively so uh, even not your family you can speak to your friends you can share your message with your friends and let them uh listen and watch you your mentors your instructors whoever that is available as much as possible they can give you that constructive feedback okay now make sure you pay attention to areas where you are to improve on if they give that uh constructive you know uh criticism you should know, maybe i talk about the aspect of your vocal variety maybe you're too loud you're too low you you know it was not saying what you're saying in your mouth you know the message was not clear you didn't get what you're even trying to say you know if they give you this kind of feedback you must go back and readjust your work. Don't, don't assume what they are saying is out of point. To, if you assume, maybe they, because if you are, they don't like you, that's why they are talking down on what you are saying. You are only going to shortchange yourself. You're only going to reduce your effectiveness. Whatever, even if it's a child, the least child in the house, that said, ah, this thing, this thing. Take that thing what person saying and look at it critically and readjust. When you do this, You'll be using their feedback to adjust and enhance your presentation skills. Don't forget, public speaking is a lifetime training. You keep training yourself on the job. You can never be better uh, when you do not accept criticism, you do not accept feedback as much as however good you are. Always get that feedback. Or even after you have done the main presentation, ask people around, oh, how was it? Did I really speak very well? Was it clear? Did you get a message? What are the off points? What do you think I should do better next time? Whatever I give to you, take note of those things and use them later on. Then number two on delivering is peer evaluations and self-assessment. So in, a, in addition to you receiving feedback from others, it's also important that you evaluate your own performance by yourself. In a situation where you're going to present and you have uh, a church maybe that has a multimedia, that uh, records or streams your 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 messages so you can go back to the youtube or go to the facebook wherever they are streaming from or streaming to go back again and watch yourself go back and replay the message you have delivered to the audience when you are doing this what you are doing is what we call peer evaluation or self assessment you know watch yourself again what you say you ought to have said what they need to use what, what, what should you have said you didn't say in case of next time so when you are doing it after the session you have practiced or you have presented you will now take some time to reflect on what went well and what could be improved upon so when you do this you can consider like i said earlier recording yourself you can do 
a mini presentation in your own house. Record yourself. That's why I, I will send you maybe gadgets you have to use uh, as your public speakers for social media. I will for it. We'll get you by God's grace. And you can record yourself. Uh, right now, I'm with a uh, daughter. See me. He's in my house with me. Can she say hi to them? Yeah, hi. she can see, see him. So he's with me. So he, right now, he can see a complete uh, a mini studio in my city room that I'm using right now to do this with you. You know, and uh, he can he can relate with some of the things we are doing here. So how you can record yourself? I think a concept of now. He's already working with me in church as one of my ICT, you know, trainees and also working. So. You need to learn how you can do this yourself on your own. If you don't have anybody that you can do this with, you can have this written. But however, we are looking at you doing peer evaluation and self-assessment. We are talking about if you don't have anybody to do this for you, record yourself, present it, and then reevaluate yourself. How your body, you know, move while you are presenting, your vocal delivery, how clear was it, and the overall <laughs> presentation style. So when you do this, you now be able to compare your performance to you the objectives and the and identify areas for growth and this peer evaluation can also become can also be valuable as they provide you with different perspectives and insight into your strengths and your weaknesses oh one of the weaknesses i had in time past and i'm still trying to work on right now is speaking so fast i can be i can run for africa when i'm speaking if you give me 10 minutes and i have like 50, 20 slides to run through i can deliver that missing within that time, I will just be on the wrong race. But over time, I realized that it is not good. Even if it's just few can say within the number, the number of people they gave to you, you say them with clarity and with authority. You see that you can make a last thing. But I run it, and the audience, you run beyond their brains, you run beyond yes, their comprehension. Yes. And at the end of the day, you just end up wasting even your own time and their own time because you will not make the impact. You are supposed to be so it is very important that you you look out for your strengths and your weaknesses as a public speaker it's very, very important sometimes people are very bad and poor in designing slides it's a weakness you can see how you can improve yourself you don't go to training how to create slides yeah so somebody's strength can be that they are good at you know being able to vary, vary their tone you know it can be a very powerful strength for them so and then the uh other part on this is refining presentation skills through continuous practice you know like i said that public speaking is a skill that improves with practice and repetition you can never become get to a point where you not say i have arrived so i don't need improvement at all no you must make a commitment to practice regularly whether it is in front of a mirror you know can be speaking to a mirror as your audience you know, with a really small group, you can also do it with a group of friends. Can put your friends together. I want to speak to you and talk to you about something. You speak and you build up the gesticulation, and you, you know. But then you should have your mind up in your head or in your hand that you want to present. Or you can do that in a formal uh, setting. So what happens is that when you experiment with different techniques, such as varying your vocal tone using visual aids, to so see that your what works best for you, you begin to start seeing that. Yeah, uh, the goals you set for yourself, you are beginning to achieve them gradually, and you now see you've been progressing from where it used to be to a place you know, over time you have mastered so well, you know. And then this consistent training and refining of your positions and continuous practice, you see that you become more confident and very proficient in engaging your audience effectively. So please, uh, always learn to continue practicing and practicing. Uh, so we're zooming this part now. Remember, mastery public speaking is a journey that requires dedication and persistence. So embrace each practice opportunity as you as a chance to grow and improve. And don't be afraid to set, you know, to seek feedback from others along the way. With time and effort, you become a more polished and a persuasive uh, speaker. So I want us to post here, and I want to get feedback from you before we move to part eight. So far. I want to get questions from you and I want to get um, feedback from you. There's a contribution from somebody, a question, you need more clarity, uh, the clarification. I would love to pause here to get us. So who would want to speak for us? But so far, is the message clear? Is the training clear?
Yes, sir. Okay. Emmanuel, let's hear from you. Sir, is it? Sir, Daniel. is it? Happy Gabriel, rather. Yes, yes, I'm hearing you. Is it compulsory for us to do group activities when we are preaching or, or dedicating our speech to the audience? Now, when I, when I mention group activities, it's not, uh, it's not, um, it's a term of rehearsal. You know, just try to practice your speech. You can just gather your friends. Like for you, you know, you can just say your brother will be your audience. Uh, if they give you a speaking engagement, say, oh yeah, come. What's the, what's the name of your brother again? Enoch. Enoch. Say, Enoch, come. I want to preach to you. I want to speak to you. Come and sit down. You are my church today. Or oh, you can also tell you that, that if you have time, that the place I want to I want to come and sit. I want to present what I have to present in school or in church or whatever within. Now present to them. So they can become your small group in the house. And uh, when you now present to them, they will now tell you how well you presented it. If you didn't do it very well, they will tell you and they will tell you what to do to help you to improve. So that's what I was trying to say. It's good you do that before you you go to present that thing formally. It's very important. Even if it is five minutes to do it, you should do it. It's very important. So let's take a Gabriela. Sir, sir, I have a question on interactive techniques. Interactive right, techniques. You said keeping yes, your right engaged is a key to a successful pitch. So, so sir, but any time of pitch is sometimes some people does not use to listen. Yes, people don't use it because they are just public speakers that are, I don't want to use the word amateur public speakers. They have not gone to training. You know, I was even expecting that some adults will even register for this training. Although I said I was trying to talk to youth, youth but many adults, you know, they have adults. Sorry to say, uh, I've talked to our, ourselves. We are we have so much pride. We don't want to subject ourselves to training. Many of the adults that you see them see, but after going to this training, what will naturally happen to you, all of you that are here now, is that anybody that is speaking anywhere, you will start analyzing them whether they are good speakers or not good speakers. <laughs> that that's actually what will happen to you. Start you become an an examiner to start as in, uh, analyzing. Anybody who speak, whether in the, on the assembly ground or whether in the church or wherever, you will. So the reason why that, and the, it is important that they they go to training, but many of them uh, usually do not want to subject themselves to training. So if you either Daniela can do it, yes, Yakubu can do it, Eno can do it, Joshua can do it, Nii can do it, Testimony can do it, you know, they can say Darasini can do it, James can do it. Yes, that is the point. Whenever they look for the speakers, they will say, No, I know this boy, I know this girl who can do it very well. That's why I'm going to be training. And you must hone your skills to that point now that nobody can break you down. You become a master of this thing. And by before you know it, you are going places, but I will let you know that you don't need to wait for anybody to start speaking to people. That's why the social media aspects coming to it. Some of you have phones. You use every Sabbath now, every Sunday, every time you can to write your sermon and preach online and post online. Your house can become your pulpit. You don't need to be giving a preaching engagement in school. You don't need to be giving a preaching engagement at home uh, for church to say for you can speak. You can write sermons and be speaking online and people will be watching you you know it's a it's already made online platform that you have people who will listen to you so don't for even church whether they give you to preach in church or in school it's not your business but you have already made all that no worry let's talk, we'll talk about that along the line so that's the point you're getting so that i think you want to answer to ask question yes so like like sometimes normally you have like peaceful like something will just happen will be like you know, that people may just like leave the stage or leave where you are preaching to the person and you like come back like 
you will be like come back. But there will be like something happened. Like how can you like change their mind? Like maybe that thing should just go. Like your mind will not be bothered about that thing again. Like so you are saying yes. sometimes you can become nervous and say, I'm more like yes. you leave the stage. You know, yesterday you're supposed to join this training. Unfortunately, you are not here. We talk about nervousness yesterday. Uh, how you deal with nervousness. True, every public speaker at the point uh do have a call stage fright, call it stage fright, okay? And uh, sometimes you start losing words, you start, you can start stammering. Your hand can start shaking, you'll be jittering, you know, you can start sweating your palms, your legs. Every part of you will just, your mind, your nervous thing, you can do this. You won't be speaking coherently. So, how do you deal with it? How do you deal with it? To deal with this first is to, uh, before you, like I said yesterday, before you get to this stage, take a deep breath. Mm, I listen now. Take a deep breath. Like two times or two three times, that will calm your nerves. Are you hearing the right? I'm listening. Yes, sir. That will calm your nerves. So when you get to the stage now, you begin by catching your audience with a strong introduction. And if you have practiced, you have practiced your 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 message. You have you have practiced your 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 manuscript before time. What happens right is that you will speak and it will be like. The, the rap attention will listen to you will be will be amazing. When you are leaving, you see that they want to clap. That's because you have imparted them. But if you don't get there, you are shaking. It's number one. Either you don't practice very well before the time. Two, you allow stage frights to overwhelm you. It's okay to have stage fright sometimes, even if you have practiced throughout the night. It's sometimes stage fright can overwhelm you. But what you just do when you get there, calm down, relax. Okay. Then another thing yesterday we said, Brad also mentioned is that you can pray. Just bow your head. Use the prayer of prayer to calm your nerves. Are you with me now? Yes. Use the prayer to say, Holy Spirit, help me. I need your strength to speak to your people and hold your pulpit. Don't let your hand, don't let them see your hands, you know, shaking. So just hold the pulpit. Don't rest on the pulpit. Hold the pulpit. Let your hand be on the pulpit. Pulpit because will help you to stabilize your jittering hands. Your nervousness, then when you want to look at them, don't look at their eyeball, look above their head, their, their forehead, or in between their foreheads. Are you getting them now? And then look, just look above their heads in that way. You need to communicate. We mentioned eye contact yesterday. Don't allow your nervousness to make you not look at them, not to make that eye contact. And I said that eye contact, it's not staring, looking at their eyes. No, it's looking between or their forehead or on top of their heads, and in that way, you're able to communicate with them. So. So if you have another question, or let's hear. So but can like can they can we also like some people used to say that if you want to go out for a speech or you want to preach to people, that if you are nervous, that you don't want to look at their face, you can look at the clock. Is it okay for a public speaker like us to really look, some people? clock can be behind you, you behind your back, you should be looking on at your back. So your clock can be behind the church at the far end. No, you don't need to put your eyes there. I don't think that's a good technique for how to be how to calm your nerves. It's not a good way. People will be thinking that they feel that the time is against the time is against you, and you are trying to beat the time, or they are and that will make them lose interest. In what you are saying, you have to look at them. At foreheads, is that clear? Yes. Clock is not a good way. It's not a good thing to leave because I don't know where the clock is even in the church. It can be at the left hand side. Can be at the right hand, it can be anywhere. So I don't know. So it's not the, it's the people that is your focus. All right. Let's hear from me before we move to uh, share Yakubu. I can hear you. Can hear you. So, like now, second. maybe. So, when like you are making a public speech, for example, yeah. and the people that are making a public speech, they are not concentrating, how can I get their attention? yesterday we touched that a bit i mentioned to you <laughs> your introduction your introduction can be form of a what call a thesis statement a statement that brings to the fore what you want to share with them in the content the body of the message then i also mentioned that you can use a story people love stories ah they like stories a lot you can start with the story. Once you start telling the story, you will see you will capture, you will, you will capture their attention. On that way, 
is to sometimes you know, crack a joke. Just crack a joke. That will make them go a bit. After you go a bit, then you bring them back to your 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 stage. Sometimes don't shut on your audience. So I will mean, have to say that again. Don't you don't you don't disrespect your audience. You can say, keep quiet, everybody. <laughs> Except it is children you are talking to. Maybe you are you're an adult, it is you can teach children. I say children, please can't be quiet. But if you are good to address an audience that are elderly people and they are distracted, you must find a way to bring them to focus on you. Either through a story, either through cr cracking a joke, or either doing something unique that can focus their attention on you. You know, just ask God for the grace. Uh, you, you see, as a, you must be very skillful. You must be very skillful. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you. All right, let's hear from uh, uh, Shem um, Yakubu. You can drop your hands, Nani. Sir, uh, can we close our eyes while I'm um, preaching? No. If you're not praying, it is not ideal to close your eyes. If you are praying, it is good to close, when you close your eyes. You see people will follow suit. Whatever you do as a public speaker, any people in the audience are most likely to follow. So when you are praying, you can close your well, you eyes. When you are done praying, you must open your eyes and speak to them. Is that clear? Don't close your eyes. Nervousness will make you close your eyes. Don't close your eyes. Open it. And don't be looking down. Don't be looking up. Don't be looking up. Don't be looking left and right. Don't be. Don't be. Don't, 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 don't. Is that clear? Okay, let's hear from testimony. Testimony, I saw your hand. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Sorry for coming late. Um, uh, with what you have said, um, I I was I, I want to ask a question, like about is it hard to show able to cultivate the audience attention, especially those people who are elders and so on? What can we mm. how can we achieve that? So you should bring out the story. What type of story can we bring out? That, that that we can uh, cultivate especially people who are elderly because sometimes they may not flow to whatever we're seeing and sometimes we also want to carry the youth along because we need to carry the attention so they can be able to get what we're seeing because we youth now this always interested in what is going what is um christian or you are you see what i'm trying to say like they know they're always interested in all these godly things they want to go after everything that's the world how can we cultivate and bring them to Christ, that's my own question. Now there are there are books, there are books that uh, offer stories concerning. See, uh, Rabungri yesterday was trying to let us know about something like you know, preparing very well for your message. Okay, uh, you must do research. You must do research. It is in the time of preparing your sermon that you have to incorporate the stories you want to tell some people are good at just cutting stories immediately they can just say flow with me imagination imagine so you know, they will just start cracking up you know just you know compelling uh stories together you have putting it together crafting it sometimes the best thing is to have stories you have read you know as a public speaker there are some stories we have read in the time past that you thought you would have needed until the time you are speaking. That's why you don't limit yourself with your slide or with your manuscript. This is a book you read. It could be a movie you watched. It could be a life experience of a minister, a life experience of a speaker you want to listen to. It can just come to your head at a particular point in time as a may or as a way of uh, expressing it. So, one, you must read and have from what called residual stories or residual knowledge in your mind. You can also remember some of the stories that have been told before by people. And that thing, you must make sure you try to adjust your brain to even craft a story while on the stage there. A story that can quickly fit into what you are saying. If it's not going to be a story, it can be something like a joke. But I don't always advocate for a joke on the altar when it's a sermon you are preaching. I don't like it and I don't advocate for it. People use altar to craft a joke that are lies. You, know, you can't do that. Because you are speaking as the oracle of God, you don't do that on the altar. But there are some you can also crack on the altar that are not false, 
but a way of just trying to make people humorous and to excite them a bit and then bring them back to what you are saying okay so it, it, it's a skill you must ask for great and over time you will learn how to do this as you keep speaking and speaking and also reading you must be a voracious reader you must read you must read you must read you must read it's not it cannot be very emphasized okay in that scope now i want to jump to our next uh parts let's see how we can move with speed now okay so let's go to but it's advanced techniques for impartial speaking now this time we're going to dive into this advanced skill uh techniques for that we focus on how we can speak more persuasively and handle difficult topics and also adapt our communication style and the fourth is persuasive what is persuasive speaking you know persuasive speaking is about you influencing attitudes and behaviors of others you know you are trying to persuade your audience to agree with your point of view or to take a specific action so to be so, to be so persuasive you need to be you need to present a compelling argument with supported evidence and logic that's what we're talking about so when you are writing now you're going to be presenting an argument for a guest like we're going to talk about say, why jesus is the best uh is the best uh or let's say christianity is the best religion you must be able to uh see how you can how you can craft a a an argument that gives reasons why jesus is the why christianity is the best religion all over the world so that is um on that aspect of persuasive so what you do now is like i said earlier is to use storytelling storytelling you know as a way of presenting your or supporting your logic and that means you use emotional uh you also use uh emotional appeals emotional appeals you know appeal to their their hearts okay this will help you to make your message you know more convincing and additionally you can also anticipate counter arguments when you present your own argument others will also bring up the arguments i know whether you're in church one day my wife spoke about creation one friday when she was talking about you know creation she was asking some students about uh how they get they came from so you're talking about evolution so she was to present the biblical account of creation but then she she just tried to bring about the other counter argument of evolution that argument of evolution into it so and then she was being she was proactive on how to address you know those things that actually she sampled their own opinion and then she now came with her own convincing uh, argument from the bible using creation story so as a public speaker you must master the art of persuasive techniques so, so that you're able to inspire action and bring about positive change in your audience number two on that handling is, is handling difficult topics and sensitive issues now there comes sometimes we're not going to present some some speeches and they are very difficult and sensitive issues it's not just it's an issue you just bring up and everybody will accept so we're going to talk about difficult topics and sensitive issues you must learn to use tactics you must learn to use empathy and you must be very sensitive in your presentation so what you do you must start by saying the presentation i have for you today i want to acknowledge that it's a complex topic and i'm you, in that way you are trying to show that you are showing diff, you are showing respect to different people that have different perspective concerning the matter an issue like a uh, a uh, uh, this issue maybe concerning hair tying using covering your hair in the church is a sensitive issue to some extent and uh it's really a difficult topic for some persons sometimes talking about gay in advanced countries it could be a sensitive issue you know for them and you will have to acknowledge the fact that you are addressing a very complex topic and you must take respect for the different perspective so you in that way you are projecting now you have to use language that is inclusive and avoids triggering negative emotions so whatever you are going to any language you're going to, any diction any word you'll be using you will be careful on how it can affect people's emotion and in that way you'll be creating safe space for open dialogue for people to come out 
and express their own end and not be able to encourage respectful discussions. So you all you do is that when you are doing all this, you'll be preparing, you know, to address these questions or objecting with some level of grace and humility from your own end because they are very difficult and sensitive topic. So, and uh, what will happen along the line is that you appeal to their emotions, you appeal to their own understanding, and you cannot create an environment mm -hmm. where discussions can emerge. No way people will just be mute, they will just keep you quiet, you feel like you are being judgmental, you don't show respect to their own end. No, you must create that environment. This is on the point of what handling difficult topics and sensitive issues. Acknowledge it and please speak with the right words that shows you may so they can you can you can elicit elicit uh, their own opinions concerning the matter so the other part of handling difficulties is adapting your communication style to different audience and context now effective speakers are also able to adapt their communication style to suit the preferences and expectations of different audiences and contests now like I said earlier, consider factors like age, their cultural background, their professional expertise. You know, when you are trying to tailor your message, you must be able to use language and examples that resonate with your audience interests and experiences. You must adjust your delivery style, your tone, and the level of formality. If you're going to be addressing doctors, you must speak well and address them as doctors. If you're going to speak to lawyers, you must speak to lawyers as people who are learned. You can't just come and start using jargons and start using colloquial languages for them no you must meet their formality with your tradition style and tone so when you now demonstrate your flexibility you want to adapt your communication style to suit them and you want to connect more effectively with the diverse audience the way you speak to students will not be doing speak to adults or to teachers the way you speak to teachers may not be going to talk to doctors or to lawyers or to talk to state state men or you talk to your parents no Every audience have a unique way of communicating with them, and you must adjust that in achieving your communication goals for different audiences. When you know how to master this, these are advanced techniques now. These are at least I don't want to limit you because you are young people. I'm preparing you ahead of your, ahead of your future. In few days from a few years from now, you'll be in high position. So understand that with all this you are speaking to determine the formality, the way you must address them. You can't speak to every audience just the way you do in the church. No, it will not be to make you have that influential uh, impact you need to have on them. And that will help you to seal up and um, help you to become a leader, a great speaker that will make impact in the lives of people. So let's jump to the uh, nine, the tenth uh, part, which is personalized action plan. Now, this one is to help you to improve as a public speaker. Number one, every public speaker, I want to say it's categorically, every technique of this, you must set goals of improvement. You must set goals for improvement. You must identify specific areas in your public speaking that you want to improve. Maybe you want to speak more confidently. Maybe you want to reduce your nervousness. Maybe you want to become more engaging. Uh, you want to be more engaging work on reducing filler words. Sometimes you are speaking and say, oh, uh, 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 eh, 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 eh. you start scratching your head. If you want to reduce those filler words, sometimes you say, mm, eh, 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 mm, mm. those are filler words. Sometimes if you are speaking using those M, 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 mm, 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 it is a poor way of speaking. So as a speaker from today, sit down after this training, check the previous presentations you have done what are your weaknesses what are your strengths and then today set a goal on how you can enhance your ability to engage your audience you know with storytelling or with filler words or whatever way so whatever your goal may be you must make sure your goal you know is specific what we call smart analysis is specific is measurable and it's achievable and it a time bound you can say in the next 10 in the next five speeches i'll be making I'll be able to overcome my filler where this M M M or M M M. You say in the next two, three speech, I'm going to make. I want to overcome filler words. I don't want to be saying M M M again. So you can say I will do this within this specific time, and I will make sure that I achieve it, and I will speak so fluently, and I will not be stammering at all. In the next five speeches, I'm going to make. 
you will, you will commit yourself to that goal, you know, and then you see that you will achieve it. I was, I was trying to give another example here. Uh, you can say, uh, for example, instead of saying, I want to be a better speaker, you could say, I want to reduce my use of filler words by 50% in my next five speeches. That's what I was trying to say earlier. So when you set this goal, it will give you direction and motivation as you work to improve your public speaking skills. So that's how to write your goal. Don't say, I want to be a better uh, public speaker. No, you will say, you write, I want to reduce my filler words by 50% in my next five speeches. That's a goal. I want to speak so clearly that everybody can hear me in the next three speeches. I want to speak either without mic or with no with mic or without no mic. I want my audience to hear me. I want to speak in the next two, three speeches that I will speak. People will say, yes, I have been blessed. I want to speak. You, you, must, uh, you must give a certain goal and say that whatever you want to do, you are doing it and you want to do it well. It's a goal and you must work towards that goal. That's number one. Number two, or now you can become a better uh, a public speaker is to create a roadmap for continued growth. So once you have set your goals, you have to create a roadmap outlining the steps you will take to achieve them. Roadmap is like growth uh, goals now. Uh, it's an uh, objective to make up your goals. So you now break each goal into smaller tasks or milestones and assign deadlines for completion. For example, if your goal is to improve your storytelling skills, you might want you might plan to read a book on storytelling techniques. I hope you're hearing this now. If you want to see how you can be telling stories to capture your audience, whether adults or whatever they are, you can say yeah. you want to improve your storytelling skills and you might have to buy storybooks and read them up. Or you want to attend a storytelling workshop where you will learn how to, to tell stories or you want to practice incorporating stories into your speeches you know, regularly. Yes. So this book map, very good. I hope you're getting it now. So you 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 make up a yes, you, set up, you you break down your goals mm -hmm. of storytelling into a milestone and say, okay, I will read a storybook at least a, a, a book in a week, one storybook in a week. The more story you have in your head, the more uh database you will have to share your stories with people that resonate with them, you know, in their various in the various speeches you'll be you'll be making. So when you have this roadmap, it will help to stay focused. And accountable as you work towards your goal. Then number three, resources for ongoing support and development. There are also um, available materials that support uh, you developing yourself as a public speaker. You can seek out for books, articles, you know, online courses, public speaking. Uh, online course is one of the courses you are taking right now to expand your knowledge and skills. So you can join a public speaking club or organization such as uh, a, 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 a public speaking uh, 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 club uh, called Toastmasters International. You can choose if you want to join them. Just go online and Google search and you have a picture of them. Then you can also, uh, as much as possible, where you can practice speaking in a supportive environment. You receive constructive feedback from peers, from your classmates, from wherever that you are speaking to, and uh, consider working with also a speaking coach or a mentor who can provide a personalized guidance and support. So by the grace of God, for all of us that are in this school here, I, I, so I want to support you as your coach, as a speaking coach, as a mentor, you know, to help you provide, I will provide for you personalized guidance as you speak, you know. So if you have a speaking engagement, come around, we'll discuss together and we'll see how we can make it a better, you know, a day that we make, we make you make a huge impact and we also surround yourself with resources that can inspire and that can motivate you to continue growing as a speaker. So in a way of zooming this part, when you create a personalized action plan, you will have a clear roadmap for improving your public speaking skills and achieve your goals. So you must make sure you stay com committed to your plan and don't forget uh, to not be afraid to adjust as they arise along the way. So with dedication, with persistence, you will become a more confident and effective uh, communicator as the day goes by. Mm -hmm. So that's that part. So I want to just rush through so that we can conclude this day. Uh, so we'll take final uh, 
remains all close. Now, conclusion and celebration. I mentioned earlier that uh, as a way of measuring our progress and celebrate our achievements, we are going to do some silly things at the end of this training. So one of those we're going to be, going to be doing graduation ceremony or, or, or final presentation showcase. Now, to mark a question on this public speaking, you know, we have about five curricula. I just want to pray that God give me strength we to complete the five sets. This first part is just public speaking, and we're ending that today by God's grace. So, but it's where us to climax everything at the end of the day. It will be the one we'll do our thesis on. So we're going to organize a graduation ceremony uh, that will come with certificates where you are going to be doing a uh, presentation to showcase what you have learned in this training and to be an opportunity for you to 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 deliver a final speech in front of people uh if possible your family members will be there to invite them to join to invite friends from around to come and join in that uh, graduation and uh, the point is to see that you have a chance to showcase your skills the confident public people have gone through the training and uh, in that way we to celebrate you accomplishing this training and uh, it's the way that i want to use to recognize an ach your achievement and your progress so during the graduation ceremony uh we are going to take time to recognize and celebrate every participant in this training and uh, your achievement and your progress and we're going to see how where well you have been able to overcome stage fright how you're able to deliver a particular speech that you're going to write by yourself uh, how consistent you were in your improvement you know and uh, by the grace of god it help us to showcase that you are mastering public speaking skills and this will help us to encourage participants to continue honing their skills the graduation is to say this is the beginning of you speaking it's not the ending it's not the final stage you are we are saying we want to launch you into public speaking assignment you know and that's why we want to organize this graduation and uh, to make you know that we are saying we believe in you you can do it you can be that public speaker that everyone will long to hear from and then through you you can begin to encourage others to enroll for public speaking advanced training courses it's going to have an advanced training course on this particular thing after we are done but this one is that going to be a paid for it will be free as i'm giving to everybody anybody who wants to come into that advanced course on public speaking will have to to pay for it but for this fourth stage uh we'll call, we can call it uh the intermediate stage we are trusting that uh you are getting for free i'm going to get a certificate along the line and we are trusting that god will help you to excel more and more in this train uh that's it so let's get questions and uh contributions amen amen now. Amen. Amen. amen amen thank you amen, amen. Let's hear from you. So let's hear any question, contribution. Man. <laughs> well done. So uh, who can tell me what I was saying concerning the assignments? If you got me clearly, I want to share. Gabriela, tell me about the assignment I just said I gave to everybody. Now. Is it Bob or Gabriela want to speak? Yes, I'm seeing a lot of more. Okay, thank you very much. So, Gabriela, okay, I'm seeing hands. Let's take the one after the other. First one is Gabriela raised the hand before, dropped it again. Okay, let's uh, take a uh, Yakubu. He said Yakubu. <laughs> Oh yeah, decide who we want to speak now and speak. Oh, uh, so you talk yeah. you talk about the assignment. You also to go and find a speech, like like a story, like of like that of Joseph, and will not impact on it. They will share shares like a live stream. They will not send it to you, as an of that it will be up from ten to fifteen minutes. Okay, that's correct. Now let me clarify that again. 
Now, for those that are far away, like the likes of Jose, uh, GMC, there are uh, some places that join us from afar, like the likes of Dozo yesterday. There are some places that are not within Oshun State here, and they are far away. So, those places, we are expecting to have their, their, um, their presentation in multimedia form. They will do it online with us. But for all of us that are in this school, I would love to organize a trade, organize a, a graduation where you are going to present life. So I wouldn't want to stress you to do that online on those that are around. Gabriela, when you come back to school, you and Bob, uh, Manuel, Enoch, Daniela, um, testimony that are seeing me, uh, 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 what's his name? Golami Day, Adewi, and others who are within, who are around here. So prepare yourself for a physical public speaking. In fact, it's more, it's most it's most likely that you may even be added to assembly roasters to be speaking on the assembly too for devotion. So but first, you have to do that graduation first. Okay. So okay. please, I want to prepare yourself very well. I want to see your manuscripts. I want to see practicing it, and I want to see you give your very best on that very day. So prepare adequately now. Take note, it's not just story, oh, yeah. it's a story, a speech that will make an impact, a speech you're going to have, uh, you're going to have a, a, an outline, an outline, what I mean by an outline, is going to have introduction, it's going to have uh, a body, and it's going to have a conclusion. So you can choose to say that you are going to give a speech concerning Joseph, you give it a title, a title you want us to look at it from is it joseph as the slave boy that became a i don't know just give it a you must give it a very wonderful title okay and the message you want us to you want to pass across to us you will pass that message across to us in a very unique way in a very unique way so um and you must do it in, in a way that you tell us the doctor the mess the give us the what's it called now the you give us you call me my screen is malfunctioning you will give us the conclusion why is my personal showing again Wow. I'm having some challenges here. Sorry, people. That's one thing about social media. I'm going to ask somebody up now. Okay. So that is um, what I was trying to say earlier. So make sure you have a good a good write up with having conclusion, having introduction, body, and conclusion. So just just come and give us just anything. Don't just come and tell us story and go back. No story can be a way of reinforcing what you want to tell us. Story can be a way of capturing our attention. And that story, the introduction should not be more than three minutes. It should be like two minutes. Then the body takes more of the work. Conclusion should take about three minutes, but the body of the work is what we want to hear more. We want to hear more. That's how we, we do this whole uh, message. Okay? How we are together now? We can hear from uh, Yakub. You want to speak again? Uh, Daniel, you're welcome, sir. As you can speak, Gabriela. Unmute yourself and speak. Sir, but, sir, but the essay that the speech that I said that we should write, sir, what is going to be the title? You are to determine that. You are to determine that as a public speaker, you must learn how to how to title your speech in such a catching way. In such a catching way that people who listen to it will never forget that message you presented. 
okay. So, so you can study the Bible to look for a speech. You can come and give us a political speech. Can give us a speech about independence and the way forward for us. Anything you can come and give us a sermon about anything that you, you have read. That does it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Yes, I saw another hand just now. I want to speak? Who else wants to speak? Okay, if that's the case, uh, we'll be wrapping up this training for this week. Okay, Yaku, you want to speak again? No, sir. Okay, now we're going to wrap up this speech, uh, this training today, and uh, we'll be here again by God's grace uh, next week, Saturday, next Saturday by 4 p.m. Uh, we're moving to social media usage. So this is the end of public training, public training. So start writing your scripts right now ahead of the presentation. So they are start practicing it. Practice your, with your family, with your friend, with your neighbor, with whoever you want to practice with, and keep making it effective. Don't wait till the graduation time. It's not right now, it's already time you already started working. You already started, you know, being already a public speaker like this right now. So what you just need to do now is to begin to start pressing that your speech over and over again, okay? And uh, I want you to also, if you want me to look at your scripts, you can send it to me, or you can show it straight to me, I will look at it and then give you uh, constructive criticism to see how it can be better. I'll provide that, uh, that, that support, okay? Um, the last thing I, thing I want to give you now is, so please, Let's see how we can start laying hold on our social media users. If you don't, if you have a laptop, starting how to use PowerPoint, how to use a design slides, it's an assignment ahead of time, personal assignment, then how to create slides, how to add pictures, how to add videos, how to write, how to put them together. If your parent will allow you to use your laptop, if you have one, begin to start playing around that. It's a way of training yourself from what we have learned so far this very period. Okay, so at this point, I think that's, that will be all for today. See, so we'll meet again by God's grace next week, Saturday. Uh, if you are if you are able to buy your equipment, I want to start buying this equipment down. Tripod stand, it can be a small one. Uh, if you have uh, ability to go to buy audio devices, you buy audio devices. Um, but it's not a must, that's a way of encouraging you because we want to start setting once I set up our, our mini studios in our real homes, you become your public speaker. You have your own audience on social media. And also, if possible, before our next week, I want to also give you an assignment. If you don't have a YouTube account, uh, create a Gmail, open a YouTube or Facebook account, Instagram, TikTok, whichever one you like, begin to open them with your name that you want to use for yourself. I will tell you more about each of those uh, uh what's it called platforms and how you can begin to use it's not going to be saying Robbie I'll be posting pictures so no we want to be engaged I'll be following all of you I'll be following all of you in your social medias I want to see what you are doing if you do something that is rubbish I will make your parents to pull it down we want to impact this generation and we want to be deliberate about it and I'm saying Gabriel La uh, Bob Yakubu uh Emmanuel Enoch testimony Daniela Jose uh, James Sidera, I uh, know they are just coming in right now. Uh, that are see me, the Lamy Day, and all those who have joined uh, Builders of Legacy. They are the one that will change generation. We are the one to give our audience a better content to view, and uh, want to do that intentionally as from next week Saturday by the grace of God. So please begin to start warming up for that training. It will be very powerful and it will be very engaging when we get to that point. So at this point. I want us to bow our heads as we pray. Father, we thank you so much for today's training. Thank you for how you have helped us to comprehend this training so clear. And we pray that you help everyone that is here today. And I pray that you give them grace to scale through to people that you want to make them. We pray for I pray for I pray for uh Bob, I pray for Yakul, 
Enoch and Emmanuel. I pray for Tessimo Lawi and Yano Lua. I pray for Daniela Drogo. I pray for Jose. I pray for James. I pray for uh, Anos Day. I pray for Darasini. I pray for Lami Day. I pray for uh, for uh, Samuel Dozo. I pray for Emmanuel. Uh, I pray for everyone who has participated in this training. But I pray that your grace will rest upon them and you will bless them. And you will to change the narrative of the content we have online and what we share in the church through them. Powerful will be passed across to us and will be blessed tremendously. Let's be our experience and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, it's what you go for you do. You are going to do now. We are going to go to the platform like today. We are going to type our name for those who are present. Type the name, your name to the platform. I will start with the first one now. Then you will follow suit with the way we did it yesterday. Copy the copy the Amen. chat. Then you will then you will then follow suit. So that will be it now. So thank you very much. And God bless you. See you next week. I'm sure you invite somebody if possible. Bye.